funny how when people request a song sometimes it, uh, it reminds you of something, but uh, um, most of you don't know Frank, but uh, he's, uh, I always say he's the, I always say he's son number four, but he's actually son number three, he's old as Mark, but either way, almost every time that Frank was in church, he would always ask somebody to sing, Are you washed in the blood. We will make it for the joy.
question that I've got on the play the piano for me. God sent his son, they call him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died,
in the next one we're talking about what the Lord has done inside the church and the kind of memories and stuff. And she would talk about her memories, I would talk about mine, and she would talk about her. She said, uh, some of the memories that we got is in church. And the sweet memories that we got, one of my sweet memories is from my mama shop. She got, she got up here and shouted all over the house. I remember one, another time she shouted at LaSalle Baptist Church. She lost her shoes. She couldn't know where she found them. She found them at the church. Uh, I thank God for those sweet memories. You can't, you can't, re you can't redo, you can't to him again, but God gives us memories every time. I thank God for a, a mom who shouts and a dad who preaches the truth. Not just the truth, the King James Bible truth. Amen. Although he's trying to find him. Yeah. <laughs> Satan whispers in my ear, why don't you trust him up? The road is much too long, and the way is far too rough. But I
your living Lord. And I can say for sure. Yes, what amen. Jesus <laughs> to you. But I
Some religion wants to make a show of everything. Brother Johnson was teaching this morning in Sunday school. And it's that way people want those photo ops. They want the ceremony. They want the everybody getting dressed up for something, you know. But life doesn't live like that. We don't live in our dress clothes day. We don't live with every hair in place, you know, or even still present, you know, on our head. But I mean we, we live in the dirt and the dust of this world. Amen. In the world, but not of it. Amen. And uh, most of what gets done for God, a lot of it happens outside the church. Yeah. Amen. Right. It happens in the field. That's right. A lot of the seeds that have been planted get cultivated, and the watering takes place, and God begins to do the increase. Amen. Uh, it's wonderful when we all get together and and we get to see a harvest take place or, or something come to fruition. But a lot of the work gets done behind the scenes. Amen. And I'm glad it's like that. Amen. I'm glad God ain't confined to this little box of a room. Amen. We can't have no hope of meeting with God unless we come to this place or come to that preacher or that priest as he was talking about this morning. Thank God uh, we can humble ourselves and be in the presence of God Almighty. Amen. Amen. And, uh, you know, there's some times, you know, we sing that song, whether so ever three, two or three are gathered, I'll be there. I found out if we'll humble ourselves, he'll show up. Amen. <laughs> we start making much of him, he'll make, he'll make much of himself. Amen. So I'd, I'd like to turn this morning, if you will, i got a thought in my heart this morning. Uh, a couple of verses in John chapter 15, then I'm going to go over to the book of 1 John, Lord will, this morning. Glad for the opportunity to be here. Glad for the Word of God, amen, that changes not, amen. Glad I don't have to go looking at a new version today to see what works for today. Uh, thank God it worked about 30-some years ago when I got saved, brother. Oh, here, amen. It convicted my heart then, amen. Oh, and it, it, it stayed with me, brother. And I tell you what, I don't know about you, I don't want anything <laughs> less. Yes, I don't want amen. to sell when it comes to the Word of God, amen. Wow. I want that which is blood-bought, that which has been uh Stood for, amen. Yes, amen. died for, yes. led over, amen, and believed upon, and people have lived their lives amen. in fear and trust and, and in loving Lord, Thank you, Lord and died with this work with a testimony on their lips, well, and their really loved ones looked at them and say, honestly, I'll see you in the morning. Amen. 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 I'm so thankful Bless today that I could have such a Bless foundation this morning, Brother Phil, that it don't matter what this world does. They're off their rocker this morning. Thank yeah. God this thing ain't changing. I found it on a rock. Praise God this morning. Amen. Amen. But come to what goes this morning. This thing ain't changing, and you can't improve upon it. Bless the Lord. I got the best thing this world's <laughs> ever seen this morning. This is as close yes, as I know today, amen, in this life. <laughs> amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Amen. I've seen them people, sometimes they'll go and they're going to a book signing. Hey, I want to go to a book signing one day, amen. And I'm going to meet the author of this precious book. Amen. Well, glory. Yes, amen. So we're in heaven. God Almighty, whoo, he put my name up there, Brother Bill. And there ain't nothing in this world could get to it to get it out. Amen. Yeah, and amen, amen I, glory. I tell you what, that's a no right. There it is. Friend, there ain't another one like it. Let me be. Yes, amen. I don't know how many 
many Terry Braytons there are in the world, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> I'm just telling you. But there's a distinction about this one. Yes, sir. Right. God knows me by night, yeah. but he knows me by heart. Amen. He made a mistake about it. Amen. Thank right. the I Lord. Find out there's another Terry Braytons sitting in my place, I guarantee you that. <laughs> Amen. So thankful for this word. I'm glad there have been times that's been the best friend I've had, Brother Gary. When I couldn't explain to everybody else how I felt, even another preacher, you know, just limited in what we can express, amen? Sure. And what we're willing to express. Yeah. But God knows it all. Yes, He does. He knows the thoughts, He knows the that's intents of our heart. Yeah. He knows how to direct that scalpel. Yes, amen. I says it's sharper than any two edged. That's right, <laughs> amen. He knows exactly where that cancer of sin resides in my body. Yeah. God says, I can get to it, and I can get it out. That's a surgery. Amen. 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 Thank God I don't need a 12 step program to get there. Amen. <laughs> Just took one step in his direction. If you found John 15, or will, kind of spoke about it. Already a couple of people have mentioned it this morning, but 12 and 13 are the two verses I want to read this morning. John chapter 15, verse 12 and 13. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. This power is Father, thank you. God, we praise you, Lord, for your Son, Jesus, for your great love, for your long-suffering mercy, forgiveness. And thank you, Lord, for this great commission you've given us. And thank you for what you've instilled in us that enables us not only to know it, but to embrace it and to obey it by your power. Not anything that we've done, but all because of what you've done. Your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We desire to lift him up, worship you today, spirit and truth. Have your way in this service. Touch the knee. Amen. 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 I thought I had a title for this message. It was simply Greater Love. But as I got to thinking about it all yesterday and even this morning, the title that God gave me for this thought was Greater Love. For the least of these. Amen. I sat across from my wife last night at the table. And we began to rehearse to each other how we each got saved. I love telling that story. I love rehearsing it for myself, Brother Gary. It reminds me of what and where I was how hopelessly lost I was in this world when God invaded my life. He sent his word. He sent people with his word. He sent by his Holy Spirit his love into my life, seeking me. And I kept, I kept putting them off and turning away and trying to discourage them for every attempt. But you know what? There was a greater love, Brother Phil. There was something that was, it wasn't just their invitations. It wasn't just the word they were speaking. There was something that accompanied them. And it was that greater love. Yes. Man. Oh. Yeah. I found out that this love, it don't just go to those who deserve it. Because none of us deserve it. Yeah, that's right. But it goes to the least. When I say least, sometimes we think of those that are the weakest. But sometimes it's them that are the morally weakest. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's those that are destitute of any knowledge of God. And in that darkness, God sends that piercing light to get their attention. And if we'll do like Moses, Moses was in the wilderness. He walked up and he saw that burning bush. And Moses said to himself, he says, I will now turn and see this great sight. And the Bible says, and when the Lord saw that he turned, he spoke to him. Yeah. All we got to do is get their attention. Amen. Yeah. 
All God had to do was get that light in there. And it got my attention, Brother Gary. And when he saw, I turned and I listened that night when I prayed on a Friday night, Brother Dave. And I prayed in that parking lot. Nobody else was looking. It was dark out there, amen. And a black man stopped me. He was on a motorcycle. And he asked me if I was lost. Bless you. We got down and prayed in the parking lot at Pepsi Cola. Went home, found out the biggest party in Monroe County was going on Saturday night and thought, why do I have to get religion tonight before this big party? I'm going to miss it all. Talked myself into going out there and that won't be wrong. I don't have to drink any. I got out there and I talked myself into thinking, well, I've never read it's wrong to drink one beer. Went back and worked after the session. The evening session went back to the party. 10.30 at night. Drinking, smoking dope. Had given up any limits or any pretense at that point. But God allowed me to walk through the house. As I walked through the house of the restroom, I saw a table. Young ladies, I knew the men I didn't know were doing lines of cocaine on that table. And it bothered me. It bothered me really, really bad. They're too young to be messing with that stuff. You know, 17, 16 years old, whatever they were. I didn't know who they were. And I, I had to get out of there. I mean, it bothered me that bad. I, I left. Came home, sat in front of that television, and it was turned off. But God just kept playing the lives of people that came by my way. When I was beating on a punching bag over here in the side yard, beating on a speed bag, Mabel Riggs got up and started inviting me to church <laughs> in my face. I never stopped them. I never missed a beat on the bag. I just kept punching. I heard him look every time of day. But that bothered me. It invaded me, amen. That light pierced in there, Brother Gary. I brought that back to mind. My sister that went over next door when I stood in the bathroom and I could hear her praying at Sharon Lay's house when they were having a prayer meeting at 2 o'clock in the morning and I was sitting there listening. I didn't want nothing to do with them but I was straining to hear were they mentioning me? Were they praying for me? Something was getting through. I'm blessed. And that man, that black man that stopped me in that motorcycle that night, we got down and prayed. And here I prayed. I sat there and all that come back. I'm looking at the TV. It's like it's all being replayed. Got down and said, God, I know hell's real, and I deserve to go, but I don't want to go to hell. Bless your Lord. I messed everything up. 18, last year, 20, almost, 20, almost 21 years old. I said, if you'll save me, I'll give you my life. I failed miserably, but God kept his part. I put everything I knew about me on a platter that night, and I passed it over. I said, Lord, it's in your court. It's all yours. Whatever you want to do with it, it's yours. Bless you, Went to bed. Got up. Called the skating rink. I said, I won't be back to work. He said, why not? So I got saved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, <hung up. laughs> they didn't know what that meant. <laughs> Pepsi called me one day and laid me off. <laughs> Two jobs. No, no jobs. <laughs> so you come back found the Bible. Bless you, Lord. And started reading over in John, came into his own, his own received or not. But when he received to them, gave you the power to become the son of God. And to them, which believe upon his name. Bless you, Lord. And God tapped me on the shoulder and said, That's where you got in. Tell you what, it took a greater love. Amen. It took a love out of this world. You see, this love was greater than my sin. This love was greater than my faults, my failures. Amen. This love was greater than my lack of knowledge. Amen. There's a lot of things that I was kind of fearful about. But thank God, this greater love doesn't quit. Amen. We all know the verse about charity, which talks about love. When you go through that, love is kind. Love is faithful. Love it says our charity never fails. Aren't right. you glad that, that never fails? Enough? That's the kind of love we call on, Brother Gary. Yeah. When we hold them up before the throne, say, God, your love can do this. I believe you're able to get their attention. And I'm not saying God's ever forced the first one of us to make that choice. But friend, he will at least bring you to that point where you know yeah. there's a Amen. choice to make. Amen. Amen. And that's where we've got to get them to, amen. That greater love will cause you to sacrifice. 
That greater love cost Jesus his life. See, greater love had no man than this. He laid out his life for his friends. Right. Then I look at who Jesus called friends. Many times it was people who were harming him. Mm -hmm. One of his last times when he spoke to a friend, it was Judas in the garden. He prayed him. He said, friend, whence comest thou? Judas wasn't there to shower him with love. And even though he kissed him, he betrayed him. Amen. <coughs> so he called him a friend. Yes, and greater love for the least of these is what this world needs. Amen. Yes, Turn with me over to the book of 1 John. about this, this greater love and, and, and the one is the Bible says that God is love. We know that the source is God himself. Mm -hmm. right. It's always good when you get from the source, ain't it? Okay. Amen. It's like that, that, that water, that spring water we talked about a couple weeks ago, going up the hill and getting it from that bucket and stuff. Nothing tastes like that. They didn't have aquafina back then, you know. When I went to that well, I mean, we did, bottled water was not really a big thing. But I can remember getting back after walking back, and by the time I got back, we had a half a bucket full of water. <laughs> he walked down them cattle trails and get back to where they sent from, they sent you, to get back and then take a, one of those, they had these big zippers. It was an aluminum cup. It looked like a measuring cup or something. But that's what they used for their water. And they'd leave it hanging out of the bucket, you know. And we get that, and I thought, oh, man, that water tastes better than any water I've ever had. Got from the source. Amen. And it, as good as I like being here and Brother Steve getting a blessing and the Lord getting all out of them, and, buddy, that's wonderful. I, I'm glad I get to see that. Amen. I see the man get up preaching power and the Holy Ghost. I'll have to see Brother Joey get up there and just, man, that, that would wear me out just watching him. Amen. <laughs> but you know what? As much as I love that, Brother Joey, I love when God, it's between me and Him. Amen. And I get something from Him that I, I didn't get from anybody else in this world. Amen. I love it when your cup runs over and I get a little bit on me. Amen. I love it when people start flashing in the pool. That's okay. I'll get that. I'll enjoy it. Friend, when God turns that bucket over on you, you know it. Amen. Thank God when you get it from the source, there's nothing like it. And nothing else to do. And nothing else will excite you. We're wondering why we don't get excited about the ball games anymore, Brother Gary. Why we don't get up excited about all this and that. Because what is that? Everything in this world is going to pass away. We can't get excited about that. But friend, what I'm getting excited about today, and what I got excited about that night I got saved, is just going to get better and better and better. Amen. And it'll be more and more and more as the days go on. Amen. Thank God. He's the source of it. He's the sustainer of it, amen? Aren't you glad that he yes, says, Lord. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yes. You know why they want to change this book? They want to water it down. Yes. They want to bring us down to the level of the rest of these so we don't have a no-so salvation, but we got to hope so. Yes. we got to think so. we got to maybe so. John says, these things are written that you may know I'm glad there's a no so in here. They can talk me out of a lot of things. And thank God there's times when God will show me things I thought, and I'm like, I was, I was off on that. But thank God I got the truth. They did. But He don't have to change for it to be right. true. Amen. He knew the end from the beginning. He speaketh of those things which are not as though they were, the Bible says. And God knows all about it. He never just had a thought occur to Him. Did you know that? <laughs> God never said, I never thought of that, Brother Joey. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Amen. He's got it all. He's the sustainer of it. But look at this love. It's, it's superior to what the world has. Amen. It's superior in its ability. Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? Move forward, we know. 
that all things work together for good to them that love God according to His purpose. Think about that. We can know that, Brother Joel. I can be in the middle of a situation and I can't really see any hope good coming out, but somewhere in me, I know this is a part of what God's going to use to work together with some other things to bring about greater praise and glory and honor to His name. Amen. And sometimes the Bible says it's through suffering that we're identified with Christ. In our suffering, we learn humility. Tribulation work with patience. Patience experience. And it says it makes us not ashamed. Amen? It brings us to a point. I don't choose suffering. I don't choose tribulation. I don't like pain. It hurts. But you know what? Jesus, look at what he endured. The Bible says he looked beyond the cross. Yeah. And what did he do? He saw us. He saw the joy of that day. He saw that one day, this no good, no count, would bow before him. And say, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. I'm trusting what you did to save me. And you know the joy you brought in my life, Brother Gary? Now multiply that to what times everybody in this room is accepted Jesus. Times everybody in this, on this day that are in this church, that are worshiping him. Times everyone that's ever lived in this world that has come to know him. What great joy, amen, he brought by his obedience to the Father, to the cross, his willingness to take that greater love and lay it down. Amen. It's going to cost us something. Nothing else is going to do. Why do men get up and wear their bodies out preaching, Brother Steve? There's evangelists that are still in it for God, Brother Gary, believe it or not. There's a lot of them on TV that they found a niche and they're making money. But there's a lot of men of God and a lot of people that are out there serving God and they're spending their whole life wearing themselves out, applying every investment they got and getting this word further and further into the world so they can glorify Him. And they're laying their lives down. They're not laying up for the children's inheritance as far as financial things, but they're investing in the souls of men. And they're laying it down for their friends. They're looking at people who look at them and hate them and despise them. A preacher gets up here and preaches, and a sinner sits back with his arms crossed and gives him a dirty look like, who told you about that? Like the preacher had to have some kind of personal experience with that. God lets you know that there's sin in the camp. God lets you, because he loves you, gives you an insight as to what needs to be preached. God inspires that preacher to preach what he says so he can direct that word because he cares about that soul. That's the greater love. That love that says, I don't care what you think about me, but i got to tell you the truth. Amen. I don't care how you act toward me. I'm going to give you in love what God gave me. That's the greater love. That love that says, I know in your heart you're wishing I was dead right now. But I want you to live. In Jesus' name. That's the greater love. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that God, who lives in us, gives us that same love. And your family looks at you and says, why are you doing this? This is costing me way too much. And yet you look at it, Phil, and you say, you know what? I'd give this and a thousand more like it if I could see that soul saved. Yeah. I'd, I'd give them every penny if that's what it took. But we can't buy the pennies, amen? It, it takes that that God provides is what God uses. In obedience to Him, God will use what God inspired, what is God breathed to bring about what only God can do. And that is the birth of the soul. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that this love is superior. This world, all that is in the world, the Bible says, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, it's going to pass away. No matter how they dress it up, no matter how they light it up, and how they decorate it, friend, at best it's a veneer. And it's a veneer to a house of cards that's going to come from the other. There's one day when even the Bible says their gold is going to canker and rust. Even these precious things won't be able to buy even the most minute comfort. Amen. But we got it all. We've got peace that passes understanding. 
We've got love that's unfailing. Amen. We've got grace. Amen. We've got mercies that are new every morning. Amen. My wife just went to the other day and she bought these real nice bread rolls. You know. And she made a hamburger and said, well, just put it on that bread. I got that good bread. I go over and I start slicing. I look. I said, what is that? I knew what it was. It was mold. <laughs> All that expensive money we paid for this one little pack of hamburger buns, thinking we were getting something really good, and it already molded. <laughs> one of these days, the world's going to find out all that they've invested in, all this fanciness, is nothing but disease. Hey, when it comes to the riches that they need for their soul. He said, didn't they? What shall man give in exchange for his soul? This world and a thousand life that won't buy it. How valuable he is. His love is superior. Amen. That love says, I'll love you while others are looking. I'll love you when I'm getting patted on the back for it. When I'm getting attention for it. His love says, they'll hate you for it. Sure. You do it anyways. And you go on and you be what I've called you to be. When no others aren't doing it, what do you tell Peter? I love it. Peter, what shall this man do? <laughs> That's what Peter said. What's it to you, Peter? Yeah. <laughs> what was that to thee? <laughs> Follow me. Yeah. Right. Well, what about him? <laughs> What's it to you, Peter? It wouldn't have added one bit of joy or comfort to Peter to know everything that John was going to face with. John was that beloved disciple, right? Bless him, Lord. But he said, you follow me. That's where your lane is. That's where your joy is going to be. And that's where your reward is. I can look over at the whole, the road that Brother Gary's holding and say, his old road looks easier than mine. Did that when I was a kid. We'd have to go out and hold corn. Mm -hmm. I'd look. I was the oldest of the six kids. <laughs> Probably four of us could handle the whole. I tried to pick which one was the easiest. <laughs> I'll take this road. You guys go do this one. <laughs> I'd get down sooner. You can't do that. Amen. He may have a path of Brother Phil. It's different than mine. Sure. But I'll never get the glory for him trying to do Phil's work. I've got to do what he called me to do. It's a small I'm thankful. This greater love hasn't lost one ounce of its effect. Of its efficacy, its ability to cleanse, amen. His word still cleanses us daily. You know, the Bible says the word became flesh. Bible also says God is love. When you go through and you read charity never faileth, sometimes I look at that and I thought, well, what if I were to put charity means love? What if I were to put God in there? God never faileth. God is kind. God never did anything in the wrong spirit, did he? He's always done it for our better man. Why? Tell you what. I'll do it. And the ability that God gives. Because he's the one that the Bible says gives us the desire and the ability to perform the work. It's just allowing that which he wants to do as a vessel to pour through us. You know, he pours it in, we pour it out. You know, we get the benefit of having his presence and his, his love, but we also have the joy of being a part of what God wants to do. Who can beat that deal? Amen. Everybody sees a, it's like today, you know, people buy stock. They see a company doing good, they'll go out and buy 100 stock, shares of that stock. They expect it to keep going to good. All my stock is in him. <laughs> Amen. He's never failed me. There is the superiority of this. There's a separating designation there between the love of God and the love of the world we know the difference there there's also the spectacle of it it is something this world will recognize when it's in action amen so much so they'll ask you brother Gary what is that that's yeah. different yeah. why would you say that like that why would you be doing what you're doing when everyone else is doing that mm -hmm. it stands out yes. and that's what the world's looking for Something that is above, it's above reproach. Amen. Something that honors God and God alone. Something that isn't patting us on the back and making us feel, and it does feel good to serve God. Don't get me wrong. 
But that ain't why we do it. Amen? We love because He first loves, loved us. And without that having taken place and that being done in our life, we would have no ability to do anything. And you look at, you know, these the mothers with their children, you know, and how they love them. And, that, and I don't know of anything better than that to describe in the natural sense. And I know there's, today there's a lot of other stuff going on. But how they will defend that child, nurture that child, do everything they can to let that child have a, have a happy, natural growth in their life. Amen. And you get between them and their child, you're looking for a fight. Amen. And I'm glad that I'm certain the one that ain't never lost the first fight. Amen. Never had to back down. Amen. He said, if God be for us, who can give you his right. I'm going to close. But I just want to say that there's some, there's some results to this greater love. Amen. There's some spiritual gifts that we receive. Amen. One of the comforts is knowing him. Every day we can and have the opportunity, if we'll seek him, to find something else that we haven't learned. I haven't learned it all, Brother Phil. I've heard Brother Johnson, Brother Steve, and others saying they don't know it all. If they don't know it all, I ain't even close. I'm not scratching the surface yet. But the chance of getting to know something else about him and getting to experience him deeper in my life, that excites me. Amen. There was a time I was a proud to tell people I worked for Pepsi-Cola. There toward the end, I wasn't so proud. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind saying that, hey, I worked 37 years, I think I accomplished something, you know. Never got fired from that job. I don't think I got fired from any job that I can remember. Came close, but I didn't get fired. <laughs> but you know what? The most proud thing I know that I can boast about today, you already heard the story, is when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Amen. And knowing Him is the greatest. You talk about Reverend Shoulders, friend. I broke my knees at his throne. Amen. I bowed in his presence and I've known he was listening. You can't have a greater audience than that. Amen. And the fact that he cares about me, the Bible says he even knows the hairs of my head, that I'm written in the palm of his hand. And having that knowledge comforts me today. Amen. To know that I can have confidence that I can have boldness. The Bible says, goes on to say, in the day of judgment. And I stand before him. It's all going to be because of Jesus. My only hope, my claim to heaven, is the blood of Christ. I'm trusting and putting my faith in him. I want to live in a way that doesn't bring reproach to him, Brother Gary. But I can't be more saved than I was when I accepted him. You know what I'm saying? I want to live in such a way that causes others to want to know him. I've heard people talk about things I thought I wasn't even interested in that. But they got to talking about it so much it made me think, I'd like to find out what that's about. Sounds interesting. I'm going to live my life over here. Faults, failures, wrinkles, warts, and all. To where when people see, they ask themselves, what makes them different? Remember those young, uneducated, ignorant men? Way back a long time ago, they listened to him and said, you know what? They've been with Jesus. <laughs> we can tell. Don't you want that to be said? At least acknowledged for something different. For his glory. Amen. Amen. Before we're too quick to pat ourselves on the back, that's why we hope I'm dead in the water without Jesus. Amen. But with him, I'm more than an overcomer. Amen. Kings would boast about their latest value, you know, victories how they overcome this army, or, and they be judged about how well they did in warfare. But the Bible says we triumph, and we're more than overcomers. We're more than our last victory. We're more than whatever the devil has put up against us, and we overcame more than overcomers. Jesus didn't just squeak out a victory on the cross. The Bible says he triumphed over them in it, and they, all of their stuff, brought him to an open shame. Amen. He didn't just squeak out a victory. He triumphed over it. He crushed it. Amen. Yeah. 
at the cross. And the Bible says, had the, what does it say? Had the gods of this world, or how's, how's that go? Had known, if they had known, they would have not have crucified the Lord of Lord. If they had known what they were doing, <laughs> and all the souls that they would lose from hell forever. And see, God was always one step ahead. There's always one, or two, or three, or five thousand ahead of me, trust me. But you know what? He's walking with us. He wants to lead us. He cares. He said, I've got a plan and I've got a path designed for you. That's how much I love you. If you stay in your lane and you walk with people, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And we've got that promise of that greater love. Amen. That's the kind of love you need when you have to visit the graveyard. When someone you've been with for years says, I don't want to be with you no more. People, Christians have gone through those things. You know that, right? When they have to lay their child in the casket. And everybody's talking about all the promises and all you have to face is the reality of death. We know that we've served one that says, hey, I'm going to wipe away all tears and believe the joy's coming in the morning. Amen. 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 I'm done. This, this I appreciate your attention. I just had this thought. And I thank God and I pray and hope you know all about this greater love. Because Listen, if he hasn't failed you until now, and I don't know of anybody that he has, he's not going to fail us. He didn't bring us this far. Josh sang that song, I'm too near home to turn back. I want to leave this place with the confidence of knowing Paul said it best. I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. I finished my course. I didn't get that in order, but I want there to be an accomplishment for him. Amen. Don't you? And maybe it's a preacher, maybe it's a singer, maybe it's a mother. Maybe it's just someone who stands up in their community and is a light. Or maybe in their job. And they're a help to others. Greater love for the least of these. You were in the care business. I know some of you do that. We go to the nursing homes and we, we have services. And there's some people, you can't get them interested in a nursing home service because they don't see the benefit of it. Don't bring you a little bit of notoriety. You know what? There's something about being in a room with people, all they want to do is hear something from God. And sometimes they'll get in there and they're reminded how it used to be when they could move and when they could worship and they could. And you see the tears start flowing. I'll tell you what, we've had bigger services in the nursing home than one we've had here in this church. And uh, they've had to come in and close the doors on us a few times, haven't they? <laughs> you know, this, Josh gets happy and starts shouting, running all over the place. You know? But they love it. They start worshiping. They do, and they talk about it, too. Yeah. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, what you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto me. Mm -hmm. God look for those opportunities mm -hmm. to share his greater love with the least of these. Somebody did it for me, and I'll be forever grateful. Amen. Let's stand this morning.